Chapter 5 Miracles Not a Test of God's Favor Seek not for miraculous manifestations. Let none cherish the idea that special providences or miraculous manifestations are to be the proof of the genuineness of their work or of the ideas they advocate. If we keep these things before the people, they will produce an evil effect, an unhealthful emotion. The genuine working of the Holy Spirit on human hearts is promised to give efficiency through the Word. Christ has declared the Word to be spirit and life. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Jehovah as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14 Satan will work in a most subtle manner to introduce human inventions clothed with angel garments. But the light from the Word is shining, and the moral darkness, and the Bible will never be superseded by miraculous manifestations. The truth must be studied. It must be searched for as a hidden treasure. Wonderful illuminations will not be given aside from the Word or to take the place of it. Cling to the word, receive the ingrafted word, which will make men wise unto salvation. This is the meaning of the words of Christ in regard to eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And he says, This is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17:3. We shall encounter false claims. False prophets will arise. There will be false dreams and false visions. But preach the word. Be not drawn away from the voice of God in his word. Let nothing divert the mind. The wonderful, the marvelous will be represented and presented. Through satanic delusions, wonderful miracles, the claims of human agents will be urged. Beware of all this. Christ has given warning so that none need accept falsehood for truth. The only channel through which the Spirit operates is that of the truth. Our faith and hope are founded, not in feeling, but in God. Letter 12, 1894 When the miracle worker disregards God's law. We must not trust the claims of men. They may, as Christ represents, profess to work miracles in healing the sick. Is this marvelous? when just behind them stands the great deceiver, the miracle worker who will yet bring down fire from heaven in the sight of men. Nor can we trust impressions. The voice or spirit that says to a man, you are under no obligation to obey the law of God. You are holy and sinless. While he is trampling on the divine law is not the voice of Jesus, for he declares, I have kept my Father's commandments. John 15.10 and John testifies, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2, 4 Then how can these manifestations of great power and these wonderful impressions be accounted for, except on the ground that they are given through the influence of that miracle-working spirit that has gone forth to deceive the whole world? and infatuate them with strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. He is pleased when men and women claim to possess great spiritual power, and yet disregard the law of God, because through their disobedience they mis mislead others, and he can use them as effective agents in his work. The Signs of the Times, July 21st, 1887 None need be deceived. Every one of us will be sorely tempted. Our faith will be tried to the uttermost. We must have a living connection with God. We must be partakers of the divine nature. Then we shall not be deceived by the devices of the enemy and shall escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. We need to be anchored in Christ, rooted and grounded in the faith. Satan works through agents. He selects those who have not been drinking of the living waters, whose souls are athirst for something new and strange, and who are ever ready to drink at any fountain that may present itself. Voices will be heard saying, Lo, here is Christ. 
or lo, there, but we must believe them not. We have unmistakable evidence of the voice of the true shepherd, and he is calling upon us to follow him. He says, I have kept my father's commandments. He leads his sheep in the path of humble obedience to the law of God, but he never encourages them in the transgression of that law. The voice of a stranger is the voice of one who neither respects nor obeys God's holy, just, and good law. Many make great pretensions to holiness and boast of the wonders they perform in healing the sick when they do not regard this great standard of righteousness. But through whose power are these cures wrought? Are the eyes of either party open to their transgressions of the law? And do they take their stand as humble, obedient children, ready to obey all of God's requirements? John testifies to the professed children of God. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2, 4. None need be deceived. The law of God is as sacred as his throne, and by it every man who cometh into the world is to be judged. There is no other standard by which to test character. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now shall the case be decided according to the word of God, or shall men's pretensions be credited. Christ says, By their fruits ye shall know them. If those through whom cures are performed are disposed, on account of these manifestations, to excuse their neglect of the law of God and continue in disobedience, though they have power to any and every extent, it does not follow that they have the great power of God. On the contrary, it is the miracle-working power of the great deceiver. He is a transgressor of the moral law and employs every device that he can master to blind men to its true character. We are warned that in the last days he will work with signs and lying wonders. He will continue these wonders until the close of probation, that he may point to them as evidence that he is an angel of light and not of darkness. Brethren, we must be aware of the pretended holiness that permits transgression of the law of God. Those cannot be sanctified who trample the law under their feet and judge themselves by a standard of their own devising. The Review and Herald, November 17, 1885. We'll sweep into the whole world. We are coming right upon the time when Satan is to work with all manner of bewitching influences and those who are charmed with them now, or give them the least countenance now, will be all ready to be swept right in to act a part with the devil then. Evil angels are working all the time upon the hearts of men. Satan is working with everyone who is not under the control of the Spirit of God. It is the lying wonders of the devil that will take the world captive, and he will cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. He is to work miracles, and this wonderful miracle-working power is to sweep in the whole world. It is now just beginning. I want to tell you another thing. The vials of God's wrath and the sprinkling of them are already coming. What is the matter that we do not discern it? It is because the light of truth does not affect the heart. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the world. You hear of calamities by land and by sea, and they are constantly increasing. What is the matter? The Spirit of God is taken away from those who have the lives of men in their hands, and Satan is coming in to control them because they give themselves to his control. Those who profess to be the children of God do not place themselves under the guardianship of the heavenly angels. And as Satan is a destroyer, he works through those men, and they make mistakes and they will get drunk, and because of intemperance many times bring these terrible calamities upon us. And see the storms and tempests. Satan is working in the atmosphere. He is poisoning the atmosphere. And here we are dependent upon God for our lives, our present and eternal life. And being in the position that we are, we need to be wide awake, wholly devoted, wholly converted, wholly consecrated to God, but we seem to sit as though we were paralyzed. God of heaven, wake us up. 
Manuscript 1, 1890. Miracles, not a test. Those who engage in the work of God's cause today will meet just such trials as Paul endured in his work. By the same boastful and deceptive work, Satan will seek to draw converts from the faith. Theories will be brought that it will not be wise for us to handle. Satan is a cunning worker, and he will bring in subtle fallacies to darken and confuse the mind and root out the doctrines of salvation. Those who do not accept the word of God, just as it reads, will be snared in his trap. Today we need to speak the truth with holy boldness. The testimony borne to the early church by the Lord's messenger, his people are to hear in this time. Though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, 8. The man who makes the working of miracles the test of his faith will find that Satan can, through a species of deceptions, perform wonders that will appear to be genuine miracles. It was this he hoped to make a test question with the Israelites at the time of their deliverance from Egypt. Manuscript 43, 1907. Wonderful miracles will deceive. Let not the days pass by and precious opportunities be lost of seeking the Lord with all the heart and mind and soul. If we accept not the truth in the love of it, we may be among the number of who will see the miracles wrought by Satan in these last days and believe them. Many strange things will appear as wonderful miracles, which should be regarded as deceptions manufactured by the father of lies. Letter 136, 1906. How Satan and his agents work. I am instructed to say that in the future great watchfulness will be needed. There is to be among God's people no spiritual stupidity. Evil spirits are actively engaged in seeking to control the minds of human beings. Men are binding up in bundles, ready to be consumed by the fires of the last days. Those who discard Christ and his righteousness will accept the sophistry that is flooding the world. Christians are to be sober and vigilant, steadfastly resisting their adversary the devil, who is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Men under the influence of evil spirits will work miracles. They will make people sick by casting their spell upon them, and will then remove the spell leading others to say that those who were sick have been miraculously healed. This Satan has done again and again. Letter 259, 1903. We need not be deceived. Wonderful scenes with which Satan will be closely connected will soon take place. God's word declares that Satan will work miracles. He will make people sick and then will suddenly remove from them his satanic power. They will then be regarded as healed. These works of apparent healing will bring Seventh-day Adventists to the test. Many who have had great light will fail to walk in the light because they have not become one with Christ. Letter 57, 1904. Ellen G. White worked no miracles. Some declare their unbelief in the work that the Lord has given me to do because, as they say, Mrs. E. G. White works no miracles. But those who look for miracles as a sign of divine guidance are in grave danger of deception. It is stated in the word that the enemy will work through his agents who have departed from the faith, and they will seemingly work miracles, even to the bringing down of fire out of heaven in the sight of men. By means of lying wonders, Satan would deceive, if possible, the very elect. Multitudes have heard me speak and have read my writings, but no one has ever heard me claim to work miracles. I have at times been called upon to pray for the sick, and the word of the Lord has been verified. James 5, 14 and 15. Christ is the great miracle worker. To him be all the glory. Letter 410, 1907. Why miracles are less important today. 
The way in which Christ worked was to preach the word and to relieve suffering by miraculous works of healing. But I am instructed that we cannot now work in this way, for Satan will exercise his power by working miracles. God's servants today should not work by means of miracles, because spurious works of healing, claiming to be divine, will be wrought. For this reason, the Lord has marked out a way in which his people are to carry forward a work of physical healing, combined with the teaching of the word. Sanitariums are to be established, and with these institutions are to be connected workers who will carry forward genuine medical missionary work. Thus a guarding influence is thrown around those who come to the sanitariums for treatment. This is a provision the Lord has made whereby gospel medical missionary work is to be done for many souls. Letter 53, 1904 Miracles in the Closing Conflict It is impossible to give any idea of the experience of the people of God who will be alive on the earth when past woes and celestial glory will be blended. They will walk in the light proceeding from the throne of God. By the means of the angels there will be constant communication between heaven and earth, and Satan, surrounded by evil angels and claiming to be God, will work miracles of all kinds to deceive, if possible, the very elect. God's people will not find their safety in working miracles, for Satan would counterfeit any miracle that might be worked. God's tried and trusted people will find their power in the signs spoken of in Exodus 31, 12 through 18. They are to take their stand on the living word. It is written. This is the only foundation upon which they can stand securely. Those who have broken their covenant with God will in that day be without hope and without God in the world. The worshipers of God will be especially distinguished by their regard for the fourth commandment, since this is the sign of his creative power and the witness to his claim upon man's reverence and homage. The wicked will be distinguished by their efforts to tear down the Creator's memorial, to exalt the institution of Rome. In the issue of the contest, all Christendom will be divided into two great classes, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, and those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. Although church and state will unite their power to compel all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, Revelation 13:16, to receive the mark of the beast, yet the people of God will not receive it. The prophet of Patmos beholds them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, Revelation 15, verse 2, and singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Fearful tests and trials await the people of God. The spirit of war is stirring the nations from one end of the earth to the other. But in the midst of the time of trouble that is coming, a time of trouble such as had not been since there was a nation, God's chosen people will stand unmoved. Satan and his angels cannot destroy them, for angels that excel in strength will protect them. Letter 119, 1904.